Hi guys, welcome back to Brew and Build. Today I'm going to have a go at making a, a braggot. Uh, this is my first braggot, and for those that don't know, a braggot is a half beer, half mead. I'm taking one of my pale ale recipes and I'm adjusting it slightly. I've dropped a little bit of the malt out of it, and then I'm adding the honey in to make up the gravity points. So I'll put the recipe up for you, but what we've got is um, Munich malt, some pale malt, some wheat malt, a little bit of chocolate malt just to give it some colour and a little bit of depth. And then Mrs. Brew and Build has been able to get enough honey for us this year out of the beehives that I've got a couple of kilo of honey in there. A braggot tends to be reasonably lightly hopped. Uh, some, some may not be hopped at all. So I'm using some Northern Brewer hops uh, for an IBU of around 20 or so. I'm going fairly heavily on the mineralization of the water. Um, I'm worried that the, the, the honey is going to thin out the, the beer quite a lot. So I'm going to put in a little bit of body back into it by using a lot of gypsum and calcium chloride. Uh, the yeast I'm going to use is Mangrove Jack's Kvike yeast. It's the Voss strain, I believe. Uh, and I'm hoping that will be a reasonably neutral flavor of yeast. So let's get started, let's get some water into the tank. Okay, that's the water volume in. Let's get the minerals in. And we'll set this to a mash schedule. Once that's up to temperature, we'll get the grains in. They're milled down. While I was doing that, you probably didn't hear it, but that went bing. So we've got uh, water up to temperature for the mash. So let's get the grains in there and we'll start mashing. And we'll come back in about an hour when that's done. Right, that's been 60 minutes. We're coming to the end of the mash, so I'm just going to do a quick iodine test. Got some iodine here. Take a small sample of the work. Put it on, mix it in. It stayed yellow. If that went purple, we'd know that there was still some starches left in it. But we're happy that's converted all the starches to sugars now, so I'm happy for it to mash out. We'll come back in five minutes when it's mashed out and we'll get rid of the, get the grains out of there. All right, we're mashed out. Let's get this malt pipe out. We'll let that sit and drain. We'll come back to it in a couple of minutes, but we'll start it boiling now. All right, that's been draining for five minutes or so. Most of the water's out of the wort's out of that, so let's get it into the pot where it can continue draining. I will leave it sit here for a good while until the rest of the wort's drained out of that. We'll get the maximum extraction we can. Otherwise, we'll continue the boil. We'll come back and we'll put in some hops into it. All right, we've got a nice rolling boil. Let's get some hops in. We've done an hour of boiling. I put uh, the same dose of hops in at 15 minutes to run, and I've thrown a well flocked tablet in there as well at about the same time. So I'm getting the immersion chill chiller coil in. Uh, we'll get this chilled down and run it down to about 30 degrees for the quark yeast. Uh, 
Right, that's it all cooled down now. We've got it down to 30 degrees. So we're just going to take a quick gravity sample, make sure we've got what we're after. Free honey, I'm looking for 1041 in this. And we are 1041 exactly. So we'll siphon it down into the fermenter, then we'll get the honey mixed into it and pour in some yeast. Okay. That's us siphoning through. <clears throat> now I get, uh, I've mixed up some yeast here, uh, rehydrated it just with 100 ml of 30 degree water. So we'll pop that in now along with the uh, the honey. Give it a bit of a stir in, try and mix some of that honey up. It's fairly liquid that honey, I'm not too bothered whether it's mixing very well. And then we'll pop in our rehydrated yeast. Pop the lid on that, stick it out uh, on the heater mat and we'll get this fermenting. And here we are, nearly two hours into yeast pitching and it's already bubbling. This yeast is incredibly fast to start. It's taken about five weeks to get to this stage. Fermentation has finally ceased. We got to final gravity of 1.011. We were looking for a lower gravity of about 1.006, but it's finished fermenting, so let's transfer it over into the uni tank. Once transfer is finished, we'll get the temperature down to three degrees and uh, we'll get on to fining. Okay, it's time to clear the beer. I tend to clear all of my beers with gelatin. So I've hit this bracket with uh, a dose of gelatin and that didn't clear it particularly well. So any beer that I don't get clear with that, I hit with a dose of Kiesel Sol or Biofine Clear. So I hit it with a dose of that and that certainly dropped a lot out, but it was still more than hazy. Uh, so I then hit it with a second dose of Kiesel Sol and that dropped an awful lot out again. But even though it got clearer it's certainly not clear it's still quite hazy but I'm I'm not going to give it four doses of findings so I'll bottle it and hopefully it'll clear in the bottle so let's get on to the bottling process so the beer's been sitting at 14 psi and three degrees for a few weeks as usual we're bottling with the Blickman beer gun and uh, at these temperatures and the usual hose length once again goes without a hitch well that's been a long brew that's been five weeks to ferment it's been sitting for three weeks lagering in the uni tank while it clears it's still not perfectly clear when we put it in the bottle but it's been in the bottle for another two weeks conditioning and it is starting to clear a little more although it's still slightly hazy we had one of these when we first bottled it and it was okay, it was drinkable, but at the end of the day it's an 8.5% beer and it's not likely to be perfect at that point. It probably does need a bit of aging to smooth out. Um, however, two weeks in the bottle, I'm quite looking forward to seeing how this one's turned out. So let's have a look.
So it's definitely cleared more. The two weeks in the bottle has helped, uh, but it's not crystal clear by any means. There's a bit of haze to it. There's a little bit of head to it, which is pretty good. It smells nice. I can smell the honey from here. And it definitely smells of honey. It's quite strong, quite strong aroma on honey. I'm almost getting a, a slightly citrusy smell from that as well. There's a, a little bit of a little bit of citrus along with the honey, which might be from the yeast. It tastes very much of honey, so that percentage of, uh, of honey in the in the brew was good. The initial taste is is quite strong in honey. Then there's a citrus note to it straight after that initial honey. The the aftertaste though is the grains. You, you, the malt comes through, and it is a nice balance. Of, of, of honey and malt the mouth feel is good it's it's not thin but it's not thick and cloying even though we didn't get the attenuation that I was I was looking for it's it's a good mouthful it's not it's not too sweet on that water profile, I'm quite happy with it. It, it leaves you, leaves you with a slight dryness, which which helps to, to offset the the sweetness of the honey at the end. The, the the citrus taste after the honey doesn't work very well. That's the only thing letting it down. It's a little bit like a, a honey and lemon tea, slightly, which I'm not sure works well in a beer. And that's got to be the yeast. I've, I've had that in that Kvike yeast before and in other beers. So that probably wasn't the yeast to use, I don't think, for that. Uh, it also took uh, a long time to clear, and that's that's a, a, a fault of that yeast as well, I think. Otherwise, the beer is, is, is very good. It's certainly going to be drinkable. And I think it'll get better with age. It's, it's a lot better than it was two weeks ago. There's no doubt about that. And that, that citrus is fading a little bit from when, when we tried it previously. But it is still, it is still quite prominent and, and, and there, and I'm not sure it'll it'll ever fade out completely. I think that'll be an, it, it'll be an enjoyable beer, and probably in another couple of months it'll be it'll be even better. If I was to do it again, I would change the yeast on that. Uh, otherwise, the proportions of, of honey and malt and the recipe itself, I, I think, is, is is quite good. Uh, but the yeast is definitely the, the weak point in that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the process. Uh, other than that, we'll come back with uh, another beer in hopefully another couple of weeks. Until then, life's good, drink more beer.